In this video, we're going to look at making potassium persulfate. It's also known as potassium peroxidisulfate. They're the exact same thing. This is a really strong oxidizer or an oxidant, and uh, some say it's stronger than potassium permanganate, which is way up there. Its chemical formula is K2S2O8, and you can see the eight oxygens right there, which is what makes it such a great oxidizer. I'm going to make this to be used in flash powder, and that'll be a later video, and also making uh, hydrogen peroxide. I could not find a video or a recipe with details on this, so I read up on a couple of items that I found online and sort of put this together myself. There may be a better recipe for getting a higher yield, but this is what I did, and it worked. I started with 60 milliliters of distilled water and uh, put a stir bar in there and started to heat the water um, to put in the ammonia persulfate. Ammonia persulfate, ammonium persulfate, is commonly used to etch metals, especially copper, and uh, you can find it online. It's relatively cheap. Uh, so I used 24 grams and slowly added that to the distilled water, which was heating up. This is very soluble in water, so there's no problem doing that whatsoever. Once it got to about 86 to 88 degrees Celsius, I slowly added potassium bisulfate, KHSO4, until it dissolved completely. KHSO4 is one of the byproducts when you make nitric acid. Nitric acid is one product. The other one is KHSO4 that's left in the beaker. I'm sorry, in the round bottom flask. And uh, so I already had this on hand, and this is what I used. I just saved it from that experiment. If you look at an earlier video, you'll see that experiment, and you can see how you can make this on your own, actually. Um, so I slowly added that to what was pretty warm water at this point. Not boiling, but pretty warm. The ammonium persulfate was dissolved nicely. It took a while, even with the stir bar, for the potassium bisulfate to completely dissolve. One of the characteristics of potassium persulfate is that it does not dissolve well in cold water. So this is warm water. Uh, the, the potassium persulfate was being made in here. And once everything was dissolved, I put it in a fridge for about two to three hours. You can leave it in there as long as you want. And when you look at it, you should notice some crystals that have formed in here. It, they look like uh, slush, like when you put snow into water, that kind of slushy look it has. And that's how these crystals looked at first. Um, I then filtered them. Uh, I used acid filter paper so that it wouldn't dissolve. I don't know what would happen if you use regular filter paper, but because of the strong oxidant nature of the potassium persulfate, I did use um, acid resistant filter paper and uh, filtered it out. And then I washed it with really cold water because it wouldn't dissolve. That really cold water was washing out some of the ammonium persulfate, which is probably still left in the, in the water here. So um, once that was done, I dried them up and uh, ended up with the, with a nice bit of crystals. I think I ended up with eight grams or something like that. But I'm going to do this now uh, and show you because honestly, I could not find a video on how to make this stuff. The first step in making our potassium persulfate, of course, is the 60 milliliters of distilled water. I'm not going to squirt it out of here. That would take forever, honestly. But um, there we go. Next, we're going to start heating the distilled water up. So I turn my stir on just to make sure the water is mixed well as it heats. You can see it's 7.7 .7 degrees Celsius right here. It's kind of cold out here in my little lab, but uh, we want to get that up there close to 80, 85, 90 when we add the uh, potassium bisulfate. But the ammonium persulfate, which I have right here, is uh, very soluble in water. I'm just finishing up measuring my 24 grams of my ammonia persulfate here. Ooh, 23.88. Let's see what we can do. Uh, 24.24. Honestly, close enough. As the water heats up uh, here, I'm going to add most of this because it dissolves really well in water, as I said a couple times. The temperature reading there is the temperature of the hot plate, not the water. But uh, the water catches up pretty quick. I'm going to put it all in there and wait for it to dissolve, which... We're not going to sit here and watch. I'll come back when it's dissolved. While the ammonium persulfate is dissolving there, we're going to measure out our potassium bisulfate. And don't forget, this is a, 
uh, byproduct of making nitric acid when you use potassium nitrate and sulfuric acid. So don't throw it out. Save it. It can come in handy. All right, we want 12 grams here. Again, this is a recipe, honestly, that I kind of came up on my own putting together a few of the uh, articles I read, but I could not find a straight up X, you know, you do X, then you do Y, then you do Z. Um, so uh, this does work. There might be a better one out there, but this one definitely works. So I've started adding the potassium bisulfate, uh, the 12 grams here. It does not dissolve readily, so this is going to take some time. I'm not going to keep you waiting. We'll come back when it's completely dissolved. So this has been mixing for about 10 minutes. I got it all in there. You can see that there is still quite a bit of the potassium bisulfate that has not dissolved. So don't get discouraged. Just keep waiting. All right, about 25 minutes later, it's all dissolved. There's some bubbles that are flying around in there because uh, the water is pretty warm. It's 89 degrees Celsius right now, but uh, everything's dissolved. At this point, you want to turn off the heat, let it cool down for maybe 10 minutes on its own, and then put it in the fridge. One last comment here. Uh, this will bubble easily, and it does give off a what smells pretty bad as far as a fume goes. So just be careful with that. Um, if you drop something into there, you'll notice a ton of bubbles are formed. I'm not 100% sure what that is, but just be aware of it. So it's cooled down for about 10 minutes or so. It's still pretty warm. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the fridge here. Right there. Gonna close the door and leave it in there for a few hours. Okay, it's been exactly two hours here. Let's take a look. Oh, there we go. <sighs> look at those nice crystals there that have formed our potassium persulfate. All right, we're gonna pour off some of the solution here. There's a few crystals in there, but compared to the time it'll take to filter, I'm not going to worry about it. Okay. You can see our crystals there. Nice looking crystals. They always are when they come out right. I mentioned earlier that this stuff is like ice in water. It's kind of reminds me of that slush, slush in water. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and filter this out and uh, wash it with cold water, cold distilled water, and uh, dry them. Filtered through pretty quick. So I'm going to use some cold distilled water now and wash these crystals. This will take longer, but this is how you do it. Here's a pile of the washed but undry crystals. They're still pretty wet. Let them dry overnight, uh, probably to make sure they're completely dried. Um, then break up everything to a nice powder and we'll finally have our long awaited potassium persulfate. And here we have our final dried product, our potassium persulfate. And uh, yeah. So I plan on using this for a couple things. One of them is to test uh, some flash powders with it. And the other one is to, uh, to make some concentrated hydrogen peroxide.